What's up guys, welcome to the channel. So this is my new PC build. Now, what I'm going to do with this video is I'm gonna break it down into four key areas. The first one being with the most important one, why I decided to build a PC. Secondly, I'm gonna go through some of the major components that make up this PC build. Third, some of the actual issues I came across when building this PC. And fourth and final, some of the planned upgrades I plan to do in the next couple of months on the PC. So let's start off with the first one, why I decided to build a PC. This bad boy here is your answer. This is the HP 250G6 notebook. And this is what I have been using to upload videos on YouTube to edit and record for the past probably year and a half now. And it's fair to say that this old boy needs to be replaced. So let me give you a rundown of a couple of the issues I experienced with this notebook. First one being overheating. Right, so this is what I basically deal with on a day-to-day -day basis when recording. Just listen to this and on the mic it comes through so loud so what i have to do is i have to just basically wait until it cools down and the fan stops spinning and then i can continue recording yeah hard times yeah but hopefully this uh this should be a thing of the past soon because i am building a new pc so this will be going in the laptop graveyard in the next couple of weeks and i will not be missing it um, I cringe at the amount of times I've had to sit down in silence and wait for the fans to stop spinning so I can start recording. Also, the actual memory on this, I think there's 250 actual gigabytes on this. Um, so basically I've maxed out from the very beginning. Anytime I needed to actually download or save anything, I'd have to delete something else. And third and final, which is the best bit, check this out. So here's the PC turned on, doing its thing. Are you ready? There we go. So the battery isn't working. The battery hasn't been doing what a battery should do for probably the past eight months now. So you can imagine there's been numerous times where I've been editing or recording. I've snagged the wire and the laptop has gone dead. Not good, not a good look. Right, okay, so let's move on to the major components. Let's start off first with the actual case. So this is the H510i. Uh, this one comes in black and white. And the reason I actually chose this one was because of its kind of minimalistic look. It's quite simple and that's uh, what the actual look I was going for. There was a couple of other cases I was actually interested in, but by the end of the day, I kind of thought to myself, this is the one I actually want to go for. Plus in white, it looks so good. So that is the case. Moving on to where should I go next? Moving on to the actual CPU. Let's start with that one first. So initially I was looking at a 3600X. I actually looked online and interesting that all of them were sold out or they were being resold at, inf at kind of inflated prices. So a little bit more digging, I actually found this one, which is a 3700X. Now I believe this one has an extra four cores. And when I was looking at the actual benefits of that, that kind of suits the build I want to make in terms of editing, rendering, processing, all that content creation good stuff. The 3700 is the one that actually is more suitable. Plus this actually somehow was cheaper than the 3600X. So that was kind of a no brainer for me. So that is that one. And then moving on, so let's go for the actual GPU. So initially, I was looking at the 1660S. That in terms of my price point was kind of mid range and I want to do like occasional gaming. That kind of suited that actual um, idea. But then I saw the 2070S um, and this one actually was quite competitively priced. So this one actually is the actual gaming Trio X. Now the reason I went for this one is because on terms of test scores, this has the best in class in terms of temperature and also noise. And comparing to the boombox I had before, temperature and especially noise were high up on my wants for a PC build. So that is actually why I went for that GPU. Right, what should I talk about next? I'm gonna talk about the RAM next. So this is what I got. These are the Trident Z Neo. Um, I had two major decisions. Let me put that up there so you can see it. I had two major decisions when choosing the RAM. Two things, first, what size? Do I want eight or 16? I actually went with the 16 for the simple reason it kind of future proofs my rig. The motherboard has four slots, and in future, if I want to add another 32, I can do so. Also, the price between the 8 and the 16 wasn't too high, so I went for that. And the second decision I had to make, which is the more important one, do I want it with RGB or without? And the obvious answer is RGB. What is a PC without RGB? lighting come on so that was that one uh, moving on to storage i actually went for a one terabyte seagate um, hard drive i also went for the 9 970 evo plus um, ssd on a quick note on this as well i actually loaded up windows when i booted up my pc on a usb drive and i made sure that the actual windows 10 was loaded onto the ssd not the hdd 
You want to basically make sure that anything that you're using frequently goes onto the actual SSD. Anything more infrequently goes onto the HDD. So that's the actual storage I used. Moving on finally, not finally, moving on to the PSU. This is the PSU I use. This is the RM650X from Corsair. This is fully modulated. So the reason I went fully modular was because I wanted a bit more control over my wire management and also deciding what cables I wanted to use and which cables that I didn't want to use. Now, when I did a couple of actually runs online to look at the actual voltage I required, it came out at about 450. So why have I gone for 650? Well, the reason being, once again, similar to the actual RAM, I want to kind of future-proof proof the rig, so I thought I'd go up a little bit more than what I actually need for now. And the final thing on this as well is, well, the reason I actually chose this actual particular PSU was because, once again, it's got quite highly in terms of, of its noise it's really quiet and that's something that i actually want to um, have on my pc so that combined with the gpu makes for quite a quiet running pc now the final thing i have got is the motherboard so this is msi this is the b40 gaming plus max let me try and get that in shot as well let's put that there let's put that like so that is that. The reason I actually went for the Gaming Plus Max was because it was quite competitively priced as well. And on the outset, it looked like it had everything that I actually needed from a motherboard. Now, later on in the video, I'll explain why it didn't. But when I first, when I initially bought it, I thought it did. Um, in terms of what it's got on it, it seems to be pretty decent as well. And like I mentioned before, quite competitively priced. So they're kind of my major components for the PC build. Right, so let's move on to some of the issues I had when building this PC. So you hear some of these horror stories of people struggling for hours on end to try and fix numerous issues on a PC build. I was not one of them. When I say PC issues, I should say, really say PC issue. So basically my audio wasn't working when I actually built the PC. I believe this is quite a common issue um, with building PCs. So when I went online, I spent way too many hours trying to research and find out possible reasons for this. And guess what the fix was? Basically down in the connection on the motherboard there is F panel and there's eight connectors and I only connected four. That was basically it. So my recommendation to people that are building a PC, if you have an issue and you know potentially the source of the issue, the first thing to do is check the most obvious, which is the connection. The connection to the power and also the connection to the motherboard. So that was my one and only issue. But while we're on the subject, I'm gonna give up two quick recommendations based off my build. The first one is for people who are building the 510i or anything similar to this as well, with the front screen which I've taken off for now due to recording. When you take it off, be really careful with making sure you've got a handle on both sides. I didn't do that and it fell off. I don't know if you can see that, but I basically damaged my very expensive desk. So make sure when you're taking off the screen for the initial build or any time after that to have full purchase of both sides of the screen. And the second thing is also a little bit of advice as well. So I run this off um, Wi-Fi, but I've been having some issues with the actual Wi-Fi connection and it's quite temperamental. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. A little piece of advice or what I've actually done as well. I run the Wi-Fi off Sky and from Sky, I actually bought a booster. Sky booster for 10 pounds. What you can do is you can plug that into the actual, the actual mains in your room and then connect an ethernet cable from that booster to the back of your PC. I've been doing that for the past couple of days and I found out not only has it improved the actual upload and download speed, it's so much more consistent now as well. Okay, so I'm gonna pause it here because after watching it back for some strange reason, when I was doing my initial recording, I completely forgot the most important piece of advice I would give after building a PC, which is your tools. And more specifically, a magnetic Phillips screwdriver. That for me was essential. When I was building the motherboard particularly, if I didn't have a screwdriver that was magnetic, I would probably be still building the damn thing now. So that is my main thing. Get yourself a magnetic screwdriver. So that's just a little bit of a tip. 
and a piece of advice for that as well. So before I actually move on to actual future potential upgrades to the actual PC, I want to talk quickly about the actual um, motherboard. So when I bought this motherboard, I believed I had everything actually I needed on it, but it didn't. So there's two things that actually, if I could do again, I would change. The first one, this motherboard doesn't come with, with Bluetooth. So I wanted Bluetooth hands-free devices on the PC. I ended up realizing after I bought it that it doesn't have Bluetooth capability and I had to buy a separate dongle. Not too expensive, but if I had thought about that at the time, I would have probably bought a different motherboard. And secondly, at the front of the 510i, it comes with a USB-C type. This motherboard does not have a connection for that as well. So one other piece of advice or a moral of a story, at least for me, is to make sure that you are running your motherboard in line with all the capabilities of the actual other components that you purchase. So that's my only qualm, qualm, let's call it, with the motherboard. So to finally move into part four, which is the actual upgrades in the next couple of months, there's two main areas and they all revolve around actual cooling. So the first one is I've got the stock fans in here. So let me actually dial it back a little bit. This case uses, uh, I believe, negative air pressure. So it has two outlets, but it doesn't have any inlets. I've seen some actual videos on YouTube showing that even if you do add inlets to the front, it doesn't even improve the actual thermal um, heating or cooling should I say of the unit so it works basically on negative pressure so these are the two actual case fans they're both 120 mil each what I have done is I have bought two additional fans here so I bought these two bad boys here these are the aftermarket ones from Noctura and they are what I'm going to be installing next but before I install them I want to do a couple more tests on the actual overall temperature inside the PC and also sound as well. Once I'm happy I've got enough data on that, I will swap these out and put these two in. So that is my first actual potential on potential actual upgrade. And the second one is to do with my air cooler on my CPU. So this is the Rave Prism um, cooler that came as stock with the um, CPU for the 3700X. Um, okay, it seems to be okay. Very similar to what I'm going to do with the case fans. I'm going to run some tests on this as well. Make sure this is running to, to spec. Once I've done that, I'm going to probably upgrade that to maybe something like, I think a 14, a 14S, I think it is. I mean, it's the Noctura version, which is a 14, or maybe the 15S, one of the two, but I'm going to upgrade that as well. So yeah, I think I'm going to be here today, guys, on this one. And hopefully you actually enjoyed and got something from this video. I've gone into it and explained a little bit about why I decided to build this PC. Some of the major components I've used to build the PC, some of the issues, i.e. one issue I actually faced when I built this PC and also some future potential upgrades as well. When I do decide to do them, I might actually do a video on the results of them as well. We shall see. So yeah, um, I will see you guys in the next one. What's up guys? <coughs> <laughs> <laughs>